Good morning, Astoria. This is Claudia Coger, your resident association president. And we are here to celebrate a goal. And we are so glad that you gather here with us today so that you can see what has happened for the residents and the children of Astoria Houses. And we are so excited. We are so excited. You too will be excited when you hear the progress that we've made with Kids Rise and other organizations and other people around, not just in Astoria, Long Island City, but around the country, that we have reached a goal here at Astoria Houses on behalf of our kindergarten, first, second, and third graders in our Astoria Houses. And in Astoria Houses, we have 184 children in that setting. And we set forth just chatting one day, myself and Deborah Allen, just chatting as to what we could do uh, for the Kids Rise program here in Queens. And we came up with this idea of investing or trying to invest at least a thousand dollars into every child's, uh, in their, their account. And um, we, we just chatting and chewing as we do, Deborah and I, we do that all the time. We've been doing it for years, but um, with the chatting and chewing, we're on the same page about helping people in the community and in education. Because in, uh, as you know, in our uh, communities, we have the dropouts of children uh, in high school is very, very large. And we figured that that's because, our, from my own experience, that's because children lose their way when they get into high school and they don't have a vision as going forward or they don't have the support as going forward. So we came up with this idea that we would uh, invest in it. And with um, our imagination, we came up with the $1,000 per child. Uh, and we just stepped out on faith, believing that this could be and it could happen. So we stepped out on faith. And um, I'm here to tell you that faith works because we have reached that goal for 184 children in Astoria Houses. And we have 184,000 dollars to invest in their future and it will be deposited directly into an account in their name that will follow them through school through high school and it will follow them even further because it is there for them to choose whether they want to go to college or they want to choose a career otherwise and i believe that this will help them to make the right decisions when they get into their teen years and continue to, to follow their vision for their future. And with that note, I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Deborah Allen Dickstein, one of my daughters. I chose her, she chose me, and we are glued together by faith. Wow, thank you so much, Ms. Koger. It is so special to be here. Um, Ms. Koger, as I'm sure so many of you know, is a very hard act to follow, um, and, but I am just, just so overjoyed on this occasion and to be alongside her here and, and as she said, for a very long time before this. Um, we are here uh, to really celebrate. This, we have an hour and a half special plan. There's gonna be well wishes from folks you know, maybe some folks you don't know. There's gonna be a special musical act. There's gonna be a read along. They, we have a lot in store. Um, so we hope you're gonna stay tuned for that. Um, just a bit about the Save for College program um, that Ms. Koger was talking about. What is really amazing is that in our neighborhood, so in our neighborhood of Astoria, but also in the neighborhoods of Long Island City, East Elmhurst, Corona, Jackson Heights, uh, Woodside and Sunnyside, 
every child starting in kindergarten or first, second, and third grade now has a scholarship account unless they decided that they did not want that. And what is so special about what Ms. Coger just announced is that now, thanks to the leadership of Ms. Coger and the Resident Association and so many folks in our community of Astoria Houses and also even broadly, as Ms. Coger talked about, across the Save for College program community, that every child in Astoria Houses with a scholarship account now is, has already, it has already been deposited, $1,000 additional in those accounts. And that is just so, so wonderful and so historic. It is the first time ever that a uh, NYCHA Resident Association has led the effort to, um, to create this community scholarship. And it also it is the largest community scholarship that, that we have ever done in our four years of existence. So we are all just so grateful and so, so in awe of Ms. Coger's leadership and her mentorship. Um, we're just so thrilled. So what we are gonna do now is we are going to uh, move into the celebration. And we um, have, as I mentioned, a read along coming up. And so for those of you who have children in the Safer College program, if you are one of those caregivers or parents or guardians for those 184 kids, you could have already picked up your goodie bag from Astoria Houses Jobs Plus. And in that goodie bag, um, you know, there was Kamala Harris's book, the book that we're gonna be reading together. Um, Superheroes are everywhere, some art supplies and some more information about the Safer College program. So it is now the moment in the program where you can take out that book and get ready to, to read along with the Astoria Houses Resident Association Executive Board. Um, and if you have not picked that up yet, you can still pick that up next week and we'll put all that details in the chat. So, one, one final thing, remember to look at the chat. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. Feel free to join the chat. This is really a celebration. We want to hear everyone's voice and we wanna make sure that everyone is getting the information that they need. If you have any questions about the Save for College program, your account or how to view it, you can um, reach out to us, the Save the NYC Kids Rise. Again, it is gonna be in the chat. And actually at the end of the, the program, we are gonna have a special demonstration after the credits roll where you can actually see how you can activate your own account. And you can actually today, if you have your OSIS number with you, and if you don't know what that is or need more information, again, put it in the chat and we'll connect with you, that we will actually be able to um, be able to show you and you can see your $1,000 in that account. So with that, we are gonna say, take it away to the program. Yes. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Adina Menzel. I'm not sure you will recognize me, so maybe if you close your eyes, you might recognize my voice. Okay, close your eyes, you ready? The snow goes white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. Does that sound familiar? That's me! I'm Elsa. I play the voice of Elsa in Frozen. I know I don't look anything like her. I have this brown hair and I'm a little older, but anyway, I want to say hi and thank you so much for having me. Congratulations to all our future leaders. Thank you to Astoria Houses Residents Association and New York City Kids Rise. Um, I just wanted to say that I love you and I'm thinking of you and I wanted you to think about that thing, you know, that makes you feel maybe a little different and understand that deep down, that's the thing that's gonna make you truly special in the world, okay? And I never want you to hold back that thing, never hold back, never hold back that power, all right? I want you to know that I see you and I hear you and you should always sing loud and proud. And even if you don't love singing, I mean, just your voice, just let it be heard, okay? All right, let's close it out, Elsa. Let it go, sing with me. Let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. What? The cold never bothered me anyway. Congratulations, everyone. Love you. Mwah. Bye. 
Superheroes Are Everywhere by Kamala Harris. Faster than a rocket ship, stronger than a tidal wave, braver than a lion, superheroes always make the world better, no matter what goes wrong. Whenever there's trouble, superheroes show up just in time. When I was a kid, I was sure that superheroes were everywhere blending in with regular people. Ready to do good at a moment's notice. I was determined to find them, so I started my superhero search right at home. It didn't take too long to find one. I noticed my mom had a magic touch. Her hugs made me feel warm, safe, and even strong. She knew I loved good food, so she taught me her secret recipes, and we'd create huge, delicious meals together for our friends and family. I even cooked some of the dishes all by myself. See, Kamala, my mom would say, you can do anything if you put your heart in it and try hard, anything in the world. My mom was the superhero because she made me feel special. She believed in me. And that helped me believe I can do anything. Who makes you feel special? Superheroes are people you can count on. My sister, Maya, and I did everything together. Ballet classes, piano lessons, bike riding, and board games. I knew if I ever needed her, she'll be one half of our dynamic duo. When we felt sad, my mom would throw us an unbirthday party so we feel better. Together we eat unbirthday cake, open unbirthday presents, and dance around the living room. Maya was always by my side. My sister was a superhero because she was someone I could count on. Who can you count on? Superheroes make you feel brave. I keep searching for superheroes in other parts of my family. My dad wanted me to be fearless. Whenever we were at the park, he'd let go of my hand and call out, run Kamala, run, and I'd run fast as I could for as long as I could. My dad was a superhero because he made me feel brave. Who makes you feel brave? My grandmother was one of the smartest people I've ever met, and she used her smarts and her voice to speak out for women who were being hurt and to teach them how to stay healthy. My grandfather used his voice to make India a free country. All of my grandparents in India and in Jamaica were superheroes for standing up for what's right. Who stands up for what's right in your life? Superheroes are best friends. My best friends and I cared about each other. When I was in kindergarten, I told a boy to stop teasing one of my best friends. And another time, that best friend helped me when I fell on the playground. We all wanted to feel safe at school. Who are your best friends? Heroes are teachers. I loved my first grade teacher, Miss Wilson. She taught us about plants and flowers, sang songs with us from cultures around the world, and revealed how tadpoles turned into frogs. Teachers like Miss Wilson are superheroes because they show us the whole wide world and help us chase our dreams. Who are your favorite teachers? When I looked, I found a superhero right down the street, Miss Sheldon. 
was our family friend and was like a second mom to me. She watched Maya and me while our mom was at work. We'd gobble up her homemade biscuits, peach cobbler, and gumbo for special occasions and pile into her car on Sundays for church. Mrs. Shelton treated everyone with love and respect. Her kindness made her a superhero to me. Who is kind to you? Heroes explore with you. Aunt Lenore and I chased butterflies and caught them in a jar. Uncle Sherman taught me to play chess. Aunt Mary and I read book after book together, and Uncle Freddie took me to museums where we'd see dazzling artwork. My aunt and uncles, my mom's friends who were a part of our family, helped me explore my world that made them superheroes. Who helped you explore? Heroes work hard. Even as I got older, I kept searching for superheroes. When it was time for me to go to college, I was excited to go where my aunt Chris went to study at Howard University. My grandmother hadn't had a chance to go to college, but she encouraged her kids my mom, my aunts, my uncles, to study hard. And they did. My mom became a scientist. My uncle Balo is an economist. My aunt Sharella is a doctor. And my aunt China works with computers. They were superheroes because they showed me that by working hard, I could be whatever I wanted to be when I grew up. Who do you know work hard? Superheroes protect people. After college, I wanted to become a lawyer. Like some of the people I look up to. Thurgood Marshall, Constance Baker Motley, and Charles Hamilton Houston. They fought in court because they knew that people aren't always treated equally, but should be. Like them, I wanted to make sure that the law would protect everyone. These lawyers were superheroes because they protected people by using the power of words and ideas. Who protects you? Heroes make a difference together. Once I became a, a lawyer, then a senator, I work at all sorts of people to help kids. Even better, I got amazing kids who want to make the world a better place. And you know what I've learned? Heroes are you. Superheroes are everywhere you look, even inside you. Are you kind? brave and curious? Are you a best friend? Do you share? Do you treat people fairly? Do you lend a hand when other people need help? You're a hero by being the very best you. Now that's pretty super. The hero code. Do you want to be a superhero? It's easier than you think. The first thing to do is raise your right hand. See, raise your right hand. And say the words on the next page out loud. If you want to wear a cape while you do this, you can, but you don't have to. I promise to make people feel special. Be someone people can count on. Help people to be brave. Stand up for what's right. Be a best friend. Be a good teacher, be kind. Explore with my friends and family. Study and work hard. Protect people who need it. I promise to make a difference when I can. I promise to be the very best me I can be.
Uh, my wish for the children at Astoria Houses is success. Like Kamala, study hard, find your superheroes, and be a superhero. My advice for the parents is to stay with, guide your children, know where your children are, know what they're doing, and in any way possible, help them to succeed. Hello, Astoria Houses. It's Miss Rebecca from PS17. What a beautiful celebration of a beautiful and fabulous community. To the children of Astoria Houses, all of you, but especially the ones that go to PS17, um, one thing that I want you to remember, one thing that I want you to remember, one piece of advice, every day you wake up, know that you have so many people in your community that care about you, that love you, and are so excited to see all of the amazing things you're going to do both every day and in the future. Whether you live with your moms, dads, aunties, uncles, tios, tias, abuelas, abuelas, all of your friends, everybody that surrounds you. You have me, you have Miss Arcodis, Mrs. Wright, you have Miss Monica, you have all of your teachers. We love and care about you so much and are so excited to see all of the great things we know that you are going to do. So just remember, please, every day you wake up, that you have a community of people, a community of people that love and care about you. My wish for the children is to keep reaching for the stars, keep picking up books. There's many places to go when you open and read through those pages. Never give up. Please never give up. You can do and be whatever you want to be. Please never give up. Parents, please encourage them. Help them reach. Help them keep reaching. Whatever they want to be, strive hard to get what they need so they can keep reaching. Hi, everyone. I am Laura Lay Salas, and I am the commissioner for the New York City Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. I too live in Queens. I am a resident of Jackson Heights, your neighbor. But for many years, I lived in Astoria where my two sons were born and raised. So Astoria residents, you have a very special place in my heart. And today I want to congratulate all of the children of the Astoria houses who have scholarship accounts for raising a thousand dollars for your accounts. This is amazing, amazing. So let's celebrate today. And I want you to keep dreaming big, to keep thinking about the future and the goals that you want to meet. Um, you need to keep talking to people that you know are doing the kind of work that you see yourself doing once you finish school. So keep working hard in school, never stop learning, and I wish you the best, the best in the world with your future plans. I am Philip A. Composto, the proud superintendent of District 30. Dear children, you are truly blessed. You have been born into a family and community who really care about you and want to help you grow into a wonderful person. New York City Kids Rise, under the leadership of Deborah Ellen Glickstein, along with your school and family, have created a personal scholarship savings account and put money into your account so you can go to college or pursue a career. Education is a journey. It is a trip started in preschool, from grade school to middle school, and then on to high school and college. My hope is that you all will be learners throughout your life. As you continue this educational journey, you must set goals for the future. Goals can be little or they can be big. They can be simple or they can be complex. Nevertheless, with goals in your lives, you have a purpose, a star to shoot for, a dream to choose. Children, it is my prayer that you achieve to your fullest potential. You are so capable of accomplishing great things in life. Chase the dreams you have. I pray that you will go with God's speed and grow to be kind and caring human beings and make this world a better place for all of us. I wish you health, happiness, and a very bright future. Thank you. My name is Linda Glover and I'm a tenant of Astoria Houses. My wish and my prayers for the kids of Astoria Housing is that they finish school and uh, pursue a career. 
Hi everyone, uh, this is New York City Council Member Costa Constantinidis, and I am so glad to bring you to be with you here today in celebration, celebration of New York Kids Rise, celebration of the $184,000 that have been raised to give all of our great students at Astoria Houses the opportunities of a college education and a college fund. My great wish for you, my prayer for you, is to achieve the greatness we know that is there. We know that you're going to be the future leaders in our community, uh, whether it's elected officials, lawyers, doctors, engineers, you know, the, the people that are going to solve the climate crisis of the 21st century, the young people that are going to invent the new solar panels and wind panels and renewable energy that's going to lead us to a, a, a cleaner and healthier future, that are going to solve the disease crisis, like things like COVID. Uh, all of that potential is in all of you at the Astoria Houses. Uh, so my prayer for you is to fight for that potential and to continue to do the great things that we know that you will. And I am so proud as your council member uh, to have played a part along with you know, Ms. Claudia Koger uh, you know, and you know, Mitchell, Bishop Mitchell Taylor at Urban Upbound and of course Deborah Ella, Ellen Grickstein uh, at, uh, at New York Kids Rise. Deborah Ellen, thank you for all that you do. And uh, thank you to the students and wishing you all the best and an amazing future. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, we hope you are enjoying the event thus far and had a great time with your children in the read along earlier. Uh, I'm Murray Abellis, the Chief of Administration and Finance for NYC Kids Rise, and I'm excited to be part this, of this special event today. I have two young children myself, uh, Eleanor, who's nine, and Madeline, who's seven, and I'm one of your neighbors here in Astoria. Today, we've assembled an amazing panel, and I can't stress how amazing these folks are, and the information that you're gonna get today, I hope is truly useful for, for your educational future for your children. Um, we've brought together experts uh, and a panel of parents and guardians themselves, many from Astoria and Astoria Houses as well, to talk directly to the parents and grandparents and and, and caretakers out there in the audience right now who are raising the next generation of scientists, doctors, nurses, engineers, mayors in, in, in our future. Um, the team here will have spent, has spent a lot of time thinking and living the college and career going experience. Today, they'll talk to you directly and share and discuss some steps and actions that we can all start taking now to start planning and saving for our children's futures. Everyone has something to offer and together sharing what works for each of us will make us stronger as a community. So with that, I'd like to jump right in and introduce our incredible panel that you could see here on screen. Mm -hmm. Dora Dan is the principal of PS234 in Astoria and a, a founding member of the Save for College program here in District 30. Principal Daniel will share with us the ways we can support our young children in their academic journeys. Andre Stith is a student and family support manager at Zone 126, a community-based organization focused on harnessing the power of collective impact to ensure children are supported from cradle to career. Andre is also an Astoria, Astoria Houses resident and a grandparent of eight. Uh, so if we see some of his grandkids come in, more the, the, the merrier. Uh, we'd love to have them take a, a cameo. He is going to share uh, more specifically about his role at Zone 126 and his perspectives on how parents and, grand, and guardians can support their children's learning. He's been a founding partner in the Safer College program uh, since the beginning. Gabby Maleve is an Astoria Houses alumnus, a recent Ithaca College grad and a current Coral uh, Fellow in Public Affairs. Now, that alone can show you the, the path of excellence that she's on. So I can't tell you how excited I am to have her on to share a little bit about her college journey and her experiences. Nadia Landy is a graduate of Lehman College, a Save for College program parent uh, and Astoria Houses resident. She is 
uh, she's going to share a little bit how, about how she's been able to leverage the Save for College program as a resource to save for her own children's futures and support and explain how she uh, supports her children on their college and career journey. And Sandy Jimenez is an expert on all things higher ed, the different types of schools, career training options that exist, as well as the resources that are available to you and what you need to consider to pay for education and related costs. Uh, so clearly we have an incredible panel and I'm really, really excited to jump right into the conversation. Now, we all know schools play a key, key role uh, in the fabric of the community and directly supporting our children on a path to college and career. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to have Principal Danner here to share her perspective as a school leader. So um, Principal Danner, what are the steps families can take uh, today to support their kindergartners through third graders in their academic journeys? Um, I, think that, I think that it's important that we start talking to our children very early on about college. I don't think it's something that we should wait until 11th grade to start saying to children, hey, what are you thinking about doing in the future? I think that it's extremely helpful to help build that pathway by making it a part of their normal day-to-day -day, um, thinking process. I know that uh, when I was a child, I'm one of seven um, children, grew up in the New York City public school um, system, and something that my parents did daily, they talked about um, where we were going in the future, what were we, what were we going to do. My father would always say, you're going to be a lawyer with that mouth or you're going to be a teacher. And I remember saying as a little kid, as early as five years old, saying, what's a lawyer? What's a teacher? But, you know, throughout um, throughout my um, education going through um, from elementary to high school, I just remember that constant conversation. And that's something that I think that's that's key, that you have to start talking about it early on. You have to start talking about um, how valuable children are and how valuable their time is, how valuable education is. And once children understand that, it becomes second nature to them. It becomes a natural thinking process. They start thinking, wow, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I think that having them, having them think this way early on will kind of like keep them on a path that's going to get them to a place we want them to be. That's amazing. I know I certainly try at every at every turn with my two little girls to try to reinforce that that notion um, and truly really try to open up the, what what is possible because right. they need to know that there aren't limits. Right. There aren't natural limits to this and and start thinking about things not in, you know, sort of only traditional paths. But what is it that they're interested in? And it's also important to note uh, that that reinforcement not only is it should not only be in the home but from other members in the community right like it's it's something that exists as a community and a fabric that we need to reinforce in each other um so on that notion i'd love to turn it over to andre to to talk about your work specifically your role at zone 126 and if you could you know as a as a parent and grandparent um, provide some tips for the the parents out there on uh how to support their kids learning Andre, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Excuse me, guys. I muted myself so I wouldn't be heard why. Ms. It's Dana an occupational so hazard on. these days. Don't worry. Um, I'd like to thank you for having me, Murray. And um, my role at The Zone, which is an educational nonprofit as a um, student support and family manager, that's just to help. It's exactly what it is. It's to support the families and the students in any way possible. So it's through the zone where we do it out, out, we outsource to partners to bring in programs that we outsource through the community of what they need. So we bring in programs such as I had once when I was working with Principal Danner, like programs like Community Word Project to come in and right. it would teach and would act in teachers to spike children and make them learn in different ways because not all children learn the same way. And, um, it's just through the zone with all the other partners and entities, it's, it helps build that, that, that pathway that students know they can. Um, unfortunately, in the society that we live in now, we can't still go by the way of, hey guys, you can be anything you wanna be when you grow up because with social media and all the norms now, it's, hey guys, you can be whatever you put the hard work in for. So it's up to us to put them on that path. And as a father and grandparent, you know, I'm, 
I'm with Principal Dana. You have to start talking about college early. How early is early? Well, I've seen kids as early as three and four on TikTok videos and watching online shows. So if they can watch TikTok and being that we're in the pandemic, which will save you some money, instead of having to go on actual college tours, you can go on places like you visit and have virtual college tours in any college campus you want to in the world. So instead of having to worry about finances and we can't make that trip, have your child as young as you want, sit and let's take a virtual tour through a college. Mm-hmm. You know, they can do virtual TikTok videos. I, I do with my grandkids. My grandkids are three and four and have TikTok channels. So I make sure as much energy as they put in that, which is good because they need some of that. You put that in to your educational path. You know, it's all right there. We can't get out because of the pandemic, because it's to be safer. It's right there in front of you. Everything virtual. And that's one of the ways to go. And this is proof that community, when community comes together to support each other, like things are, there's nothing that's impossible. I had no idea about these virtual uh, college tours. So guess what we're doing on a Friday night at home tonight? We're going to take a tour. I don't know where, but somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. If you go on you visit, I mean, it's literally when you punch it, every college just pops up. So you can, any virtual, any campus you want to go, you want to go to Michigan, go to Michigan. You want I actually send my kids to Yale and Harvard and things like that because nothing's out of their reach. So I don't want you just to think you're not going to just look at um, community colleges and the norms. Oh, you're in Queens. You got to go to St. John's. No, you can go wherever you want to in life. But like I said, it's the work has to be put in and it's our job here to back them up. Because if I'm a strong, firm believer that if we do not give children direction, we cannot sit back and blame them for getting lost. And that's just that simple. That's amazing. Um, transitioning from the community now directly to a parent um, in the Save for College program. Nadia, I'd love to talk to you about how you leverage the Save for College program as a resource and why the Save for College program is an important tool for children in our neighborhood. Yes, thank you, Maury. Um, so, I first learned about the Safe for College program when I arrived to Astoria Houses community, and um, I worked with the parent coordinator at my daughter's school, and they also helped me activate the New York City scholarship account. And with that, I also found the opportunity to open up my own 529 account for my kids, and I have three kids now. Um, So (laughs) it was like, my oldest son, he's in uh, middle school and I wasn't able, I missed that whole um, New York City kids rise for him, but I still was able to open up the 529 account for him. So now both of my kids um, that are in school have a 529 account and I started them off with their funds. And my daughter, the youngest one who's about to turn one, I plan to start hers once we get back the taxes. So I'm gonna also get her rolling starting her first birthday (laughs) and you know with that whole finances started to kick in where i told the kids hey you guys can actually start making money by doing chores around the house so i opened up a bank account for them and got them started with their allowance and with that allowance they were able to do whatever they want if they wanted to buy stuff on amazon they wanted to buy their whole fortnite game chips, whatever they got going on, they were able to do that so they don't have to keep hassling me or their dad for money so they can earn their money. So I told them this is their way, like I don't mind them making their mistakes now because in the future when they do these little wrong little purchases and so forth, they'll understand what the difference between a want and a need. So that's where I also was like, hey, I need to start getting them prepared for college mentally. So, hey, why don't you guys figure out how much money you guys can get from your chores, how much you want to save and how much you want to spend. So now they all have this whole notion of, oh, I'm going to save five dollars towards my uh, weekly goal and I'll save two dollars to put towards my um, my gaming system every week and so forth. So, 
you know, they they're more of like opened up to this whole finances. And then when stuff comes along, they're like, oh, mommy, how much is the rent? How much is this? How much do you have to pay for food? So now they're more aware of what is actually needed to survive in this world. So and I told them as well with their college, they can get um, they can do whatever they want. My daughter has like a wide variety of things right now. She wants to be an artist. She wants to be a dancer. She wants to be a YouTuber. She wants to be in, uh, into music, playing guitar. My husband got her ukulele and guitar. And my son wants to be a basketball player and a drummer. So they all have like a wide range of things. And I told them, you don't have to stop with one. You can pick them all. There's a lot of hobbies. You can make money off of any of those things. So let them keep exploring, let them keep, you know, making their mistakes from now. So by the future comes, by the time they're of age, they know what it is to survive, what it is to to move forward, how to guide themselves into the next process. You're doing an amazing job, I, I must must say. Uh, as a parent, you know, uh, trying to to give some of this, you know, survival information or really the notion of like, this is how the world works with finances and linking and using the Safer College program as a tool for that as, as a teaching moment is, is incredible. Um, it also bears noting that, you know, higher education opens up a, a world of opportunity to better jobs, better pay, savings and wealth. Um, and just given your, your kids story of all the different things they want to do, there's obviously different uh, there are many different options for higher ed, depending on what, what kids want to do. And I know personally that just feels super overwhelming, just even thinking about that. So I'd love to, to turn it over to Sandy to talk about um, if you could break down some of the different options for higher ed and, and, and career training um, that exist for families to consider, it'd be really helpful for the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so there are all different kind of options. And we're only going to fit in a few right now, but some basic ones you should know about. We've got colleges, and we heard the mention of community college, right? And these are colleges that are right in your community that offer certificate programs and associate degrees, which are degrees that are designed to be completed in two years. You know, maybe you don't complete in two years, but that idea, um, you can come right out of those types of colleges with a career, or you can continue on to a senior college, a college that offers bachelor's degrees. And those degrees are designed to be completed in four years. And you can study all different kinds of things there, come out with a career or keep going. There's even more, but we'll leave it there. And uh, sometimes they'll call it for short two and four year colleges, right? Then we've got public and private colleges. Public colleges receive their funding mostly from the government. Bonus, uh, if you are from New York State, uh, which we all are, hello, uh, we've got two public school systems in New York si State. In New York City, we have the CUNY system, City University of New York, LaGuardia Community College, Baruch, Hunter, all of those schools are part of that system. And we've got SUNY, which is the State University of New York. Uh, those schools are mostly not in the city. Uh, we've got Binghamton, uh, Oneonta, Stony Brook, so many colleges. If you attend one of those schools, another bonus, you get a lower price than people coming from outside of New York because you're funding the colleges with your taxes. And that's something really important to keep in mind. So there are those colleges which have a lower residential price, right? Then the private colleges, they're mostly funded by private funders, hence the name, right? So it could be an organization or it could be people that have graduated from there. And those schools don't have the bonus price that we were talking about. They don't have the lower price, but they have more money to give you to go to their school. So they might have scholarships, which we'll talk about later, and other free money to help you afford to go to that college. What does that mean? When my child goes to college, I have a second grader of in 11 years, I'm counting down, uh, She, I'm gonna consider both types of colleges. I'm gonna make sure she applies to both 
so that I can have different kind of options, different kind of prices to compare. And guess what? There's other types of options too. So those are the types of colleges. There are also other types of trainings that our, our young people can participate in to get good careers. We have apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are offered by usually by unions in different kind of trades. So we've got plumbing, uh, welding, carpentry apprenticeships where students can study and learn side by side with somebody that already is successfully doing that job. Amazing. Uh, also, we've got vocational trainings, right? So I want to learn how to um, net, do networking with computers in an office. There are trainings that I can take to do that and get hooked in with a job. And I can do those through different organizations and also through colleges too. So those are some of the options. Guess what? By the time our students go to college, 11, 12, 15 years, there's going to be more and more options. You just got to keep your ears open to the different types of careers that are available. And also for, in order for our children to make good informed choices, we got to keep talking about all these opportunities to them as they grow and, and talk about the different kind of careers that are out there as they grow. The other day when I was watching the inauguration with my daughter, pointing out the different types of amazing women that were on that stage that were doing different kind of jobs. We've got somebody who writes poems, right? And who was able to read her beautiful poem and at the inauguration. That's something you can do. What kind of education do you think she needs to reach there? Uh, we've got uh, Justice Sotomayor. How do you think she got there? Let's talk about the path that she followed. That's a really important daily conversation to have so your child can make all the right choices among the variety. That's, that's excellent. Uh, clearly uh, a wealth of knowledge uh, on, the, on the topic. And, and it's also clear that doing your research now will, will only help you feel prepared, right? As, as we're going down the, and keeping up with that research. Um, Gabby, since you are a recent graduate, I'd love to talk to you about your journey at Ithaca College. I, I know you have a BA in culture and communication, so I look forward to the day that we turn the tables and I'm a panelist and you're the moderator uh, for our next panel. Uh, but why don't you tell us a little bit about the process for you before uh, uh, going to college? Yeah, for sure. And, and thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be on with all y'all. Um, so I'm a first generation college student, right? So the process was very new for my family and I. Uh, we met with my guidance counselor, which in some places can be flooded with other students. So I had to find opportunities in different spaces. Um, but something that I thought was really critical in that process was like researching how I can get uh, application vouchers. Because when you're applying to schools, they, it costs money. Um, so my goal was I'm going to school for free. And on top of that, I'm going to apply for free to every single place I go to. Um, and so I had to be very strategic in, in that space and just really be open and talking to people on how to get those uh, doors open for myself. Um, something else that I was thinking about during that process was affordability. Right? Sandy talked about private versus public, CUNY versus SUNY. Um, so I wanted the place that was going to give me the most money and where I was going to graduate with the less, like, less amount of debt that I can. Um, Another big thing for me was a study abroad experience. I wanted to explore the world. And I was like, any place that's gonna give me money to do that, and on top of that, I can go as far away as I can. Um, I, I, that was, again, super important to me. And when I got to Ithaca, I had the opportunity to study abroad in New Zealand. And I was like, okay, this is out of, this is out of my frame of knowing. Um, so that was really exciting. I also wanted to dorm, so I had to think about geography, right? Uh, Am I far to? Am I far enough where, like, if my mom calls me, she can't just like show up randomly, or it, can I come home quickly? So the, all these things were coming into it. Do you want a city? Do you want more rural? Um, a big school, so a big state school versus a mid or smaller space. And I knew I excelled mostly in that interpersonal, very small scale uh, classroom where there was only maybe like twelve people, because that's where again I felt that I was going to get the benefit of of learning. Um, and then lastly, something that was really important to me was 
I didn't know what I was going to study going in, right? Everybody's like, I'm going to be pre-med. I'm going to do this and this. And I was just like, ooh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I really, at that time, was internalizing the idea that um, if you don't see it, you can't become it. Um, And so the biggest thing for me was, okay, I needed to go into something maybe undecided or a place where I can explore. So going into Ithaca, they had an exploratory program which I was really uh, privileged to be a part of because some people may be like, no, nah, that's just an undecided major. But <laughs> at the same time, I was uh, in this program where I would have to sit in seminars where people from different majors and occupations would come in and talk to me about their experience. Um, and that was really important to me. Uh, and so that was a big piece. And like Andre said, um, I didn't have the opportunity necessarily to go to every school that I applied for. And I applied for a lot, um, like I said before. and so what I did was the online tours were super beneficial to that process of like, okay, what does this campus actually look like? Is it accessible for me and for uh, maybe my family? They also want to visit. And so those were all kind of contributing factors. Amazing. Um, I appreciate how you may have been undecided at the beginning in terms of uh, a major, but you were so clear uh, on the criteria of the, of the, the setup, right? What type of school the, 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 the sort of, um, the constraints that you wanted, you wanted to study abroad and so forth. So uh, knowing that uh, preparation certainly helped you. I, I'd also like to piggyback on that just to know what resources you may have leveraged along the way um, for, for the college experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I would, and I think give credit to my mom because she was always like, you need to put yourself out there. Um, so I, I, that's always kind of something that sits in my head too. So in high school, I also was lucky enough to be accepted to high school through the student sponsorship program. So I went to a private school in Jamaica. Um, and so on top of like the guidance counselor who was there for the whole school, I also got a mentor um, through this program that was helping me just to attend this private school. Um, and so those were kind of like my in institution spaces. Um, but for me, it, it just wasn't enough, right? People had their own lives to also deal with. and. So I was also a part of the Fresh Air Fund, and they had a program called the College Connections Program. And I got another mentor in that space who was critical in this financial literacy, understanding the packages I was getting, really breaking it down for me and my family. And so those are some three. And I I think Sandy might touch on this later, too. But so when you get into a private school, so I applied to Ithaca, which is a private institution, um, they had a program called the Higher Education Opportunity Program. And so I was accepted into that program, which again, allowed me to go to school at a highly discounted rate. Like Ithaca is uber expensive. Um, so this one was affordable for me. It, it worked out. And through that program, I was, you have to do classes before your freshman year starts. So I was accustomed to the campus. I was taking math classes and psych classes, getting my writing up to date um, and up to the level to to go into the classes I wanted to. And so I felt like that put me at an advantage compared to kids who were like coming in fresh on uh, first day of freshman year who maybe didn't have a community to start with or didn't know where things were. And I kind of already had those pockets. Um, And then in college, I also had to get a job. And that was a part of my financial aid package. And so with the job, I ended up getting a, a spot in the student affairs office where I had interactions with the financial aid department, with the career services, vice president. Um, and through those relationships and, and just learning, um, I was recommended for another uh, opportunity for, uh, where was it? The Department of Programs and Outreach. So they were doing all the programs on campus, um, which was also in a space with the culture, race and ethnicity department. And there I was working on student programming, some policy, and I met uh, professors and staff from all over campus, which just really broadened my understanding of, of what was actually happening. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it, it really does introduce, uh, again, the notion of cost, because we all know uh, that uh, college and career training uh, comes at a cost, right? And sometimes particularly significant. So I'd like to, to turn it back over to Sandy. Um, I'd love to hear from you, what steps can we take as parents now, as caretakers now to prepare for for this? And if you could explain some options that might exist, it'd be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
there are many different options and I really love um, to have heard about the um, HEOP program, which is one of several New York State opportunity programs that exists for low income families. That is a program you have to look into. It offers so many benefits. So that's one. Uh, but there's so many other things. Uh, we've got scholarships, which are free money. So in some ways, free to you, you don't have to pay it back. Um, scholarships and grants, those are two types and highly desirable. So that's something that we can start researching right now. Absolutely. Uh, we've got loans that we can leverage to go to college. Uh, loans are money that you have to pay back, of course, but we've got student loans from the federal government, which are usually pretty small and also very friendly, low, low interest, that sort of thing. And we've got work study, which we already heard about where you're working and you're receiving money in order to study. And you can get these funds from the state. Um, you can get funds from the federal government uh, and from private organizations and the college itself. So looking into the, you know, when you're looking into a particular college, let's see what kind of scholarships that they have. What kind of grants do they have available? That could be something that you're looking into. Um, additionally, there are um, funds that you can access for uh, middle income families, which you should also start looking into if you've got a family which is making, you know, I, you know, maybe I can't get any funds because I'm really not low income, but I don't have a ton of money. Uh, right now we have a scholarship called the Excelsior Scholarship in New York State. Um, if you're undocumented and you're like, oh, I can't get any money. We have New York State Dream Act funds. So there's something for everyone. And that's really worth to look at. Um, and also, hello, we've already heard from our parent on the panel that you can start saving now, whether you're part of the Save for College program or not, you can start your own five to nine plan um, to save money for your children. So that's something else you can do. And then to become educated about how much does college really cost? What am I saving up for? What am I trying to budget for right now is really important. And it's important to know that not all colleges are super expensive. Like we said, we've got private and public colleges, which have different price, right? Um, and that there's many things we got to plan for. Sure, I got to pay the college to go. I got to pay tuition. If I'm dorming, I got to pay for the dorm. Uh, but also I got to pay for books. I got to pay for my metro card. There's all these incidental costs that I got to plan for. So those are all things to keep in mind ahead of uh, college. That's really important information. Uh, as you can see, there's a ton of resources available to families and, and to for us to consider, right? And really start preparing for and start thinking about. Um, just like there are various different savings options and, and, and options to pay for school, um, there are also various ways in which we uh, can create a, a college and career going expectation in our children at home, right? So Andre, as a parent and grandparent, I'd like to toss it back over to you. Um, what are some ways that the parents out there in the audience can create a college and career going expectation at home? Now, I know you mentioned some of the career, the, the college visits. Are there other tips you can give folks? Uh, sure. Uh, first, listen to your children early. Um, find out things that they're interested in in school. Find out if it's something that they even project themselves doing in the future and then try to steer a goal towards that. There's ways of finding out what they learn and how they learn, you know, steer them educationally towards that and encourage extracurricular activities like it, like after school programs, during school programs, summer programs, the SEYP. If, like I have in our summertime, I send kids to Camp Hurlit where they learn camp counseling and interaction with students, just give them things to learn. Like Sandy said, other jobs, because the reality is, Every kid's not going to college. College is not for every child, which is not a bad thing. But what children need to learn also is that once high school's finished and you get that little rest period, life starts. So that's when mom comes in and, hi, baby, I love you. Here's the cable bill. Get that paid. And so you got to have other options. Like she said, there's two year, four year, licensed, trade, anything. But just keep that going and just 
in, encourage extracurricular activities, get them involved in things, make them, and no matter what it is, and you as a parent, show interest. There's nothing worse than a child that shows interest in something. It can be at school. I done spent my whole day with Principal Dana and she gave me the right path and I'm so happy about what I'm gonna do. And then I get home to a parent and family that don't care. That's it's what, powerful. Amputated spirit is bad. It's very, know, so very just powerful. make sure you care. That's why we also got as much as we wanna do for the children. I know we all say, what does it take to raise a child? A village, right? We have to make sure the village is being raised right. What happens when no one's raising the village? The village has to be right too for the child to be right. So it, it's it's a joint thing. We all have to do it together. Like I said, just start, like all my panelists said, start talking early, extracurricular activities, find out what they love and learn and just move forward. Amazing. Um, let's let's also acknowledge the reality of, of being in an unprecedented time, right? Where we're all now transitioning um, into different models of, of the world, given the pandemic. Uh, certainly, uh, schools have had uh, an incredible role in trying to transition learning from an in-person environment to a remote environment. So, so Principal Danner, um, I'd love to hear from you, um, what are the, some of the best practices? I know we, we talked about this a little bit briefly uh, before we started the panel. Um, that people can, during this remote time, that can be implemented to encourage and support our kids. So I'm gonna, I wanna talk about home and school. So I, and again, thank you for having me. I'm so excited as I hear everybody on the panel, I'm just like, I'm just so happy to be here because this is exactly what we need to be doing. This is exactly the type of message that we all should be sending to our kids. Um, when I when I when I rebranded our school seven years ago um, to the School of Performing Arts and Technology, I had it in mind from a kid who went to public school and my public school didn't have a theme. It didn't have something that hooked me, but it was something that I still had to do every day. Right. Our parents encouraged get up, go to school. You have to get an education. But I think in, what's important now and you all talked about it like things are different now, right? We have to hook our kids. So that's why we started with the rebranding of our school to the School of Performing Arts and Technology. So between home being fully remote and being in person, we still have the same type of expectations, which are very high expectations at PS234 in District 30, right? We're all in District 30. Very high expectations where it doesn't matter if you're at home, if you're in the school building, we're still going to have our residencies. We're still going to have, since we are performing arts and technology, we have full-on technology classes that students are expected to engage and present um, presentations, our residencies, our full-on dance program. Kids are at home dancing um, with our teacher teaching them ballet and classical genres of music and dance. We have so many things to offer. I think that it's it's a headspace, right? It's a mindset. We have to let them know that, that no matter what, it's important to keep moving on, move forward, onward and forward. We can't get stuck in the moment. We can't, we, can, we have to capture this moment and we have to use it to catapult us into where we need to go, where we wanna go. So I think for families at home, um, I think the important, the most important thing to take from this conversation that I'm having with you is don't stop, keep going, build on the momentum. I know that Miss Landy talked about it, Andre talked about it, Sandy, you talked about it, and so did you, Gabriella. You all talked about the different things that you are doing or had to do to get yourselves in a, in a, in a space, get your children in a space to um, move onward. And I think that's the most important thing, not to get stuck in the moment, but to capture and seize the moment and use this moment to take you where you need to go. Um, I, often tell, I, I often tell children, look in the mirror. What do you see? They say, I see me. I say, I see me too, right? Um, you see a reflection. That reflection has worth, it has value, and it's going somewhere. And it's up to you to create a path, stay on it. You might go off it here and there, but you're going to have people who are going to guide you, to align you, to help you get to where you need to go. So for our families at home, don't stop. Don't give up. No matter when you, no matter what obstacles come up for yourselves as an adult, we know as adults, we come up against a lot of obstacles, especially during a time like this, right? Financially, um, socially, mentally, all these different pieces for an adult mind. Imagine a child. So don't stop. You know, 
re, you know, reach out, get the support you need. I love what Gabriella was saying, how she, um, you know, she got herself, she was out there. She put herself out there. She, she, she relied on her mentors. She relied on different people, her mom to help guide her. And to this day, she still talks about thank my mom for where I'm at today. And I, I love that because I say the same thing about myself. It wasn't for my parents, right? I wouldn't be where I'm at. I mean, I tell this to people all the time. I'm from the, I grew up in the South Bronx, right? Just like Astoria houses. I lived between Mitchell projects and um, Millbrook projects. I, we were dead smack in the middle. Seven of us growing up in a tenement building, just like many of our families in Astoria houses. And the important thing that I remember every single day was my mother waking us up, rise and shine, time for school. Let's get this oatmeal on the table. Let's get breakfast in your stomach. Let's get these books done. You make sure you did your homework, get to school. We were present. And present doesn't mean having physical attendance. Present means that your mind is there waiting, ready to receive what's coming next. And that's important. I think that's the important message for us to give to all of you in Astoria Houses, all of us, that we have value. We, we are important and in given the right resources and given the right mentors, like Gabby said, yeah, I could you Gabby, Gabriella, um, we, can, we can do anything. We can be any, anyone. We just watched an inauguration um, that showed us that every single girl can not only be vice president, POTUS, president of the United States, because just like uh, VP Harris, and I feel the same, if I'm principal, I tell my students at home, I tell my parents, you have to be better than me, right? So we have a female vice president. That means you have to aim for being president of the United States of America. And I think the message is clear and everything that we're all saying on this panel to all of you, um, to all of our story housing um, residents is that don't stop. It's, it's not just a dream. It's our reality to be more than we are right now. And if we continue to support, mold and mentor our children, the opportunities are endless. Miss Landy talked about it. Um, the kids always ask me for things. She said, I'm going to give it to you, but you're going to have to work for it. And I swear, I that took me back to my childhood because that's what my dad, you know, did for us. He said, you want this and that? You're going to have to do chores. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. And at the end of the week, we had a couple of dollars where we can go to the store and buy things we wanted. But the lesson from that was that you can't get anything for free. You have to work. Like Andre said, you have to work hard to get it. And when you develop a mindset that you have to work to get something, you will not stop at anything to get it. And that's the message. Don't stop at anything. You will be, you can be, you are. I'm just gonna let that soak in for a moment for everyone. That, that incredible mic drop moment right there. <laughs> uh, we've covered so much and I, I can't express my appreciation to the panel today for, for all that they've shared. Um, in closing us out, um, we have many, many young children with their parents watching today. Just if we could do a quick round robin of one piece of advice you want, just the last, uh, last thing out there. Um, I'll just start off with Nadia, if you don't mind uh, sharing one piece of advice to the younger students and the parents in our community. Um, yeah, I would say like just to have a plan, you know, f stick to it and just make sure you know you will have the kids doing learning as much as possible and just do what they you know make them find out what is it that they really love to do there's so many things that you can do so i don't want them to go to college and have like an unsure of what they want so explore now find out what it is that you love and stick with it excellent sandy I love that. Um, that was a, a little bit of what I was going to say, too. I loved what Gabriella said earlier, so I'm just going to echo it. it. You can't be it if you don't see it. And I think that or some, something like that. Right? Um, I think we have to expose our students, our children to everything that's out there, college, different kind of careers. We got to talk about those things every single day. We have to be really intentional because if we're not, they're not, they're only going to know a very few things that are, are out there. And that's not the truth of the matter. The matter is there's so many pathways that they can follow. Gabby. Yeah, I guess this one's for uh, more so the students, but 
uh, make friends who are different from you. I think in in those spaces, you'll find a lot of inspiration and a lot of that difference. I know for me, uh, really helped. And and in that process, be kind because uh, we don't necessarily know what everybody's going through. Right. Excellent, Principal Dana. I I think that it's important to tell everyone, um, don't quit. Even when it gets rough, it may be rough right now. Um, don't quit. Keep going. Um, just uh, adjust to your situation and keep going. Try your best. Um, the moment you stop is the moment you give up. And that's when it stops. So don't stop. Keep going even when it's tough. Even when you think you can't do it anymore, find strength in your faith. Find strength in the people around you um, and utilize that to fuel yourself. Stay positive. Stay in Capture the moment, seize it, run with it. And last but not least, Andre. Well, this is extra personal to me because it's going out to Astoria Houses where I was pretty much raised. I moved in Astoria Houses in 1977 is when I moved to Astoria Houses. Um, I left for a year and came back, but I'm still here. And what it is is that I hope everyone that's on this call or listen to everyone on this panel listen to what they said and realize that all of these great people did not get there alone. You are not alone. Okay. Nobody has to do it alone. Frankly, nobody can do it alone. You have to reach out. You have to reach out for help when you need it. There are so many sources out there for you of people that know what you're going through. I know coming from the urban developments in the inner cities for so long, we've been promised things we've saw so many people come in and come out and say we're going to do this and do that but at the end of the day we got to help each other we got to pull each other up because technically nobody's going to want to help nobody that wants to help, that doesn't want to help themselves so we have to just help each other realize that help is there you don't have to do it alone you can't do it alone you see we're here and you know i love you you know where i'm at you know i'm always around and i'm here for you so Thank you to all our panelists today for sharing their, their love and their passion uh, for the topic uh, and for sharing all their incredible perspectives to the folks out there watching today. To everyone watching, thank you for your time and please stay tuned. We have much more ahead uh, and we look forward to the next time we can meet. Goodbye. Take care everyone, be well. Take care, stay safe. Good evening, Astoria Scholars. Congratulations. You're almost there. I want to give you a word of encouragement. Shoot for the moon, because even if you fail to get to the moon, you'll fall amongst the stars, and there is where your dreams will be. I, I again want to say congratulations. This is Miss Renee. You know I wish the best for you. Hi, I'm Queensborough President Donovan Richards, and it brings me great honor to be here to congratulate none other than our phenomenal TA leader, Ms. Koger, on this historic occasion alongside New York City Rising and raising thousands of dollars to ensure that our young people have a fighting chance to obtain a college degree. And I cannot tell you how important higher education is and ripping down the walls of inequality, especially for our public housing residents who are not ever resourced correctly. But today, through this initiative, Ms. Koger and New York City Rise is showing that when we come together, there is nothing stopping us. And I know our young people are going to benefit immensely from just the mere fact that they have an account with their name on it that is saying that they can do it. And I want the families of Astoria Houses to know that no matter how hard it gets, when you think you can't make it, when you think you can't do it, know that there's a village standing right beside you, in front of you, and behind you. And this initiative proves it. So I'm here to congratulate Ms. Koga once again on a phenomenal job at making history. There's no public housing development in Queens or in the city that's achieved this, but you've done it. So congratulations, my good friend, and let's keep rising. Thank you, New York City Rise.
Hi, parents and students of PS171. I am so proud to be asked to do this. I would like to congratulate all of you for this wonderful honor that Ms. Koger was able to give to all of you. $1,000 toward a uh, 529 plan is unbelievable news. Boys and girls, you know the importance of a college education, and you know that here at PS171, we work very hard to get everybody ready for college and career. Parents, you know we're here to support you in every and any way we can. My door is always open to you, and even though our children may have moved on to junior high school, you are always welcome to come back and speak to us. Thank you again for everything you are doing, and remember, we are in this together to make sure our children are college and career ready. Thank you all. Hey kids, it's Senator Mike Gianaris here. I have the privilege of representing you guys in the State Senate and wanted to beam into you today and just uh, give you a word of encouragement uh, that you, you're doing great uh, in school, you're doing great with your education, you gotta keep it up. I wanna thank the people at NYC Kids Rise for working to make your success even, even better and uh, certainly Ms. Cover and everyone at Astoria Houses who's doing such great work. Uh, we love working with them, we love them, we appreciate them very much, but for you all, I uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, you understand how important it is to, to keep keep at it, keep reading, keep studying, keep doing your homework, because that unlocks the future for all of you. And we're here to do our part to make sure you have the tools to get into college, to keep moving ahead with your education. Uh, but that is the key, and we need to unlock uh, the barriers that keep you from succeeding, uh, and that's what we're trying so hard to do uh, with a good education, you will be defining the future. You will be the ones making the change. You'll be identifying the next vaccine that we need uh, or solving the world's problems on climate change or all the important things that, uh, that are creating issues for us right now. We're counting on you to do the right thing to, to help us uh, have a bright future. And that means you have to have a bright future. So keep at it, keep focusing on your schooling and we'll do our part. Uh, to give you the tools you need to, to succeed going forward. So thanks all very, very much. Keep at it, uh, and we'll be here to help. Hi, my name is Reverend Corwin S. Mason, pastor of the Community Church of Astoria and Astoria, Queens. We want to wish all of our youth from Astoria Houses well as you go forth. Just know that the sky is the limit, and we, the leaders of the community, are behind you 100%. God bless. Hi, my name is Cynthia Davis, Director of Community Outreach for the Floating Hospital. Here at the Floating Hospital, we wish Astoria children all the best in their new journey. Children of Astoria, enjoy this journey. Hi, I'm Teresa McKinney. I'm a full-time parent at home with two teenage boys. My wish and my prayer for the children of Astoria Houses that they will prosper, they will be all that they can be, they will excel in school, do your best, excel in all your classes, go to college, and be all that you can be. And don't let no one stop you or tell you what you cannot do in life, because you can do anything that you put your mind to do. Georgetown University, the American
Hi, I'm Bishop Mitchell G. Taylor. My well wish is that every child in the story of houses will activate their child savings account for college because in doing so, you're setting a precedence that I'm going somewhere. And guess what? Don't let your destiny be controlled by where you come from. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew J. Ripshandani and I'm the proud executive director of Zone 126. As a child who grew up in Astoria in Long Island City, my wish for the children of the neighborhood is that they may always believe. Believe that you're amazing, believe that you can do anything you set your mind to, believe that you can contribute to the world and believe that you're making the world a better place each and every day just because of who you are. So may you hold belief in your heart, your head, your mind, your body, and your soul. Believe that you're amazing because I sure do believe you're amazing. I'm Marion Jeffries. My wish and prayer to the children of the Astoria that their future is there before them and that it will be promising. We've all had a rough time with this pandemic and children not going to school and everything, but I know that we will make it through with perseverance. Continue to study as you have been, and many of you by remote, I'm sure. But do the best that you can. Parents and guardians, I know this is not easy. It hasn't been easy for anyone, but you gotta stay strong because I think we have some good things coming up in the future. We've had a rough year, everybody. Parents, teachers, children, and just me as a person being home when I'm accustomed to being out. And it's been very difficult. But I think through prayer, and everything, we will make it, we will make it. And just don't give up, don't give up. Thanks so much to NYC Kids Rise and to Claudia Coger and to the Astoria Houses Residents Association for all of their efforts to help the young people in Astoria Houses. Their emphasis on helping them prepare for a future educational rise through grammar school, through high school, through college, this investment in their awareness and their ability to go to college, to go to higher learning is really so incredibly important. These young people are the future leaders of New York City, of, of our country, of our nation. So we, we need to support them and Astoria Houses has done that. And because of the work, we see a bright future. My wish for the children in Astoria Houses is that um, all their dreams come true. Um, and that they be the best that they can be. This is Kathy Nolan, and I'm lucky enough to be the Assemblywoman for Astoria Houses. I just want to add my congratulations to the wonderful children and families here at Astoria Houses who will be enjoying the opportunity to go to college. And I want to thank Deborah Ellen Glickstein and everyone at Kids Rise for the work that they do. My dad grew up in Queensbridge and he didn't get the chance to go to college. I was the first in my family to go. And now my son, Nick, is a student at a SUNY school. It's so wonderful to be able to give your children the benefit of a college education. They become critical thinkers, they earn more money, and let's face it, during this awful pandemic, we know that our children are our hope and our future. So congratulations to everybody, best of luck, and enjoy the education journey, and enjoy your future, a good future for all of us here in New York. Thanks. Hi, my name is Sadia Sherman, and I'm Executive Vice President for Community Engagement and Partnerships at the New York City Housing Authority. My wish for you and all the children of Astoria Houses is that you live your wildest dreams. My wish is that you work hard and you always try your very best, but you go easy on yourself when you're trying to learn new things. You are powerful beyond measure. My wish is that you know the positive impact you make every day in the lives of your family, with your friends, and in your school community. My wish is that 10, 20, 
30 years from now, you're sharing your wish with the children of Queens School District 30 and that they are just as proud of you as I am today. That was so great. Wasn't this an awesome show? And wasn't this such a, a beautiful journey? And um, we've reached our goals and, and um, I, I'm just so excited I'm lost for words. And I'm just gonna turn this back to you, Deborah. God bless. That, that was truly amazing. I just love seeing so many people who are so committed to the success of all of our children. It was so inspiring. Um, what we're going to do right now to close out the show is we are actually going to do the quick raffle. Uh, for those of you who picked up the goodie bags, um, you have a raffle ticket hidden there. I think it's, it's disguised as a bookmark in the book. And so get your raffle tickets out now. Um, and I, we have randomly selected these numbers before the show. And so I am going to read the winners. And then if you actually win, you're gonna send in a screenshot and an email um, to superheroes at nyckidsrise.org. So let me read, read the numbers now. The winning numbers for the raffle are 167 and 117. That's 167 and 117. Um, take a moment, look and see if, if you have won. And there are some beautiful prizes from Astoria Bookshop as well as from Bel Air Diner. Um, and so what you will do if you have won, and we can write this in the chat here, is send a screenshot to superheroes at nyckidsrise.org and we will get you those, those raffle prizes. So um, we are gonna turn it over back to Ms. Colger for some final words here and some final inspiration. But before we do that, just a reminder that after the credits, and you're going to see many names who have contributed again to this, to this beautiful, beautiful event, as well as really the process over the last year of pulling, pulling all of this together. Um, but we're going to, after the credits, have a, a demonstration of how you can actually log in today and see this $1,000 in your New York City Scholarship account. So stay tuned for that after the credits. And with that, Ms. Colger, the last word is yours. This has really been a great, great gathering. And I'm just so excited. Um, I'm at a loss for words to a certain degree. But I just want to let you know that we are so excited that you all thought it not robbery to come and gather here today for such a great movement in our community. And I say to the young people, I want you to grasp this now. And the parents, I want you to pursue it. That every, I, I, these children, they are masterminds in their minds. I said, there's some that can be doctors. They can be lawyers. They can be politicians. They can be whatever they want to be. They can be scientists for the next vi uh, vaccine for, for whatever the pandemonium is going to be because they have the mind and the effort to do it. And I want you to keep that in mind. I can be whatever I choose to be. Let that be your motto with the help of the almighty God. You can be whatever you want to be. Let nobody poison your mind otherwise and stay on the course. Stay on the course and reach your destinies in life. And we appreciate each and every one that came aboard to help you to make the next step toward your goal from kindergarten on through high school. We thank you so much, each and every one that came to help us with this, this movement and our board, my board members, I, as I told you, I am the president. The vice president is Ms. Renee Edwards. Our, our, secretary, our uh, recording secretary is Ms. Marion uh, Pearson. Our, our treasurer is Ms. Almeida Rodman. Our financial secretary is Ms. Stephanie Jackson. And our sergeant of arms is Ms. Pauline McCullough. And we, they all together, they worked so hard on this project. And oh, that doesn't exempt all of the other people that we don't even have their names. But it's so many people that came aboard and deposited into this financially 
and with their gladness and support to continue you on in your careers in your life. And please make, make this a treasure for your life. And we thank you and we thank you.
welcome to the Save for College program. In today's short video, we will walk you through how to activate and view your child's NYC scholarship account. We call this Building Block 1. There are three foundational steps that parents should take as part of the Save for College program. We call these the Building Blocks. Building block one is to activate and view your child's NYC scholarship account. With that in place, you have the option to complete building block two, opening and connecting your own college savings account. And finally, building block three is to make your first $5 deposit in your own account. From there, we hope you will keep saving in the ways and with the frequency that makes sense for your family. Completion of each building block is worth a $25 reward for your child's NYC scholarship account. Today, we're going to focus on how to complete building block one, activating and viewing your child's NYC scholarship account. You will go to nyckidsrise.org and create a profile on our online portal, which is called the Savings Tracker. You will then complete a brief one-time survey, and that's it, you will have completed building block one. Please note that to complete building block one, you only need a few pieces of information. The zip code where your child lives, your child's date of birth, and your child's student ID number, which you can find on your child's report card, in your NYC schools account online, or by asking your child's school. You will never be asked for your social security number or ITIN, or for any banking or credit card information to complete building block one. Now we will navigate to nyckidsrise.org to start the process. You may complete building block one on your phone, tablet, or computer. Make sure you have gone to nyckidsrise.org on your web browser. Note that you can translate the website to the language that is most comfortable for you by clicking on the white translate button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen and choosing your language. You will then start by clicking on the pink View My Account button. And scrolling down to the Get Started Here button. Please pick the Get Started Here button in the language that is most comfortable for you. Once you click on Get Started Here, a pop-up box will display with the words, with the button that says continue. When you hit continue, you will be taken to a registration page on the savings tracker. On a one-time basis only, you will enter your child's zip code, date of birth, and student ID number. Then click on register. You will then be taken to a page that says new profile. On a one-time basis, we will ask you to enter your name, your last name, your email address, and create a strong password. Passwords must contain the following, eight or more characters, one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number or special character. We recommend that you memorize your password and not write it down anywhere. Then you will enter your password again for verification. To look at the terms of use for the savings tracker, click on the orange terms of use words. When you're ready, click on the white checkbox and accept the terms of use. Then click on create user profile. Once you are in savings tracker, a brief introductory survey will pop up 
The survey allows us to get to know the families in the program and follow up with appropriate next steps. This survey takes a few minutes to complete, is completely confidential, and all questions are optional. To get started with the survey, scroll down and start answering the questions by clicking on the drop down menu, which says click to select. When you've completed the survey, make sure and hit the submit button. Hitting the submit button is what triggers the $25 reward for completing building block one. Congratulations, you've now activated your child's NYC scholarship account. The first thing you will see with your child's name is a graph with your child's name that shows your child's initial deposit of $100. If you log back in within a few days, the graph will also display the $25 reward you earned for completing building block one today. Here in the savings tracker, you can check the balance of your child's NYC scholarship account and see how the value changes over time. As you earn rewards by taking certain steps and the community contributes to your child's scholarship account. You can also open and connect your own 529 account to the savings tracker so that you can see all your college savings in one place. Take some time to look at the scholarship account together with your child and show them the money that they have for college and career training. Knowing that the community is saving for their higher education will help them stay on the path to college and career training. Below the graph, is also, there is also some key information about the savings tracker and the three building blocks that you should read through carefully. Once you, have, are, you are ready to leave Savings Tracker, simply scroll back up to the top of the page and click on Log Out in the upper right-hand corner. You're all done. Thank you for watching this short video. We hope it was helpful.